Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. This is Ken and Good Sean. morning. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It all, Hello. it just all melds and stuff. So, hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Um, if you are new during this live or if you're watching the replay, make sure you hit subscribe on your YouTube. Mm -hmm. Right now, there's subscribe. And then there's a little bell. Hit the bell because if you don't hit the bell, you're not going to get an alert. And then you're going to email us and say, I'm not getting alerts. Why don't you like me? And I'm going to say it's YouTube. Um, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you like our Facebook page. And there's a feature there that says get all, all. notifications. Not just a couple, but all. All. So, how is everyone? As many of you guys know, we are getting a ton of questions on a Glowforge. And normally we don't go live on Monday. Mm -mm. But I told Sean, we've gotten... Just in the last week, I think Christmas shopping season has started because we are getting flooded with questions. So today we're going to kind of show you a little bit of the Glowforge. Mm -hmm. um, we have a quick segment on how we quickly clean it. We're going to show you how to cut, score, engrave the differences on both wood and acrylic. Mm -hmm. And goodness, such goodness. So before we dive into any of that... I know a lot of people are researching the Glowforge and what, um, if that's something they want to add to their arsenal. And there's a few things as you guys enter that I just want to hit home with Glowforge. We've had this machine a little over two years or just about two years. Uh, the first one, yeah. We have a basic, a pro, and we will be ordering a plus. And I'm going to be honest, in the beginning, I thought it was overrated. I thought it was way too expensive. I didn't think anyone was going to buy this equipment because of the price and it sat in our studio for a while but then this guy started playing with it and then i started getting more comfortable with it and with everything they've refined their software and how the machine works and now it is our go-to machine in the house and the reason why i want to cover this i i always like to tell people because the first thing i get from people is it's so expensive ken is it really worth the price? So I just want to give you just a quick insight that number one, I think yes it is. But number two, the big thing about the Glowforge that I love is one, it's easy to use. Mm -hmm. The software, very easy. You do not have to have an engineering degree to use the software. So right there, it's amazing. Number two is, and this is a big part, you're not just buying a machine. When you buy a Glowforge, you're getting the Glowforge community. And we're gonna be ref referring a lot to the links through this video, um, specifically right now, the Glowforge community, number one, and the Beyond the Manual. But mm -hmm. what I love about the community is there is hundreds, thousands of people with this machine that are way smarter than we are, <laughs> that have figured out things that literally have helped us immensely. Mm -hmm. um, and it's called Beyond the Glowforge. And what it is basically is when you get the Glowforge, it's a pretty easy setup yeah. um, and you walk through it. But as you start using it, you might encounter questions or you might hit a roadblock and the Beyond the Manual is where a ton of information, we're talking cut settings. If you run into an issue with the print head, it is a huge asset with this machine. But number three, more than anything, um, the reason I'm falling more and more in love with this machine is I am seeing everyday people who had no intentions of buying a machine and starting a business, literally creating a business and getting orders on their Etsy store, on their Facebook page, or just from friends to the point where they're saying, I cannot keep up, which is amazing. <laughs> right now during, you guys all know the C word, COVID, a lot of people are going online and looking. And for me, anything that turns someone from just a casual user to a full-fledged business, business is huge. I'm not gonna bring in names, but I know at least 10 people that are so busy, they've had to buy a second machine. Yep. I've seen people open storefronts on, um, for me, that's priceless. If you can become an independent person making money off this machine, which it's possible, 
it, it, it the possibilities are endless. So yeah. that's the main reason we're focusing on that. Now, with that said, uh, we will answer questions and all of that stuff. I also have my computer, um, but the links are down below. Let me explain the links. Number one, uh, if you want to save up to $500 uh, on your Glowforge, make sure to use our link. That link will give you up to $500 off, but more so, it will help us know that you bought it. We get an email that says so-and-so bought it because we want to make sure if you have questions on setup, products we use, how to clean it, that you can reach out to us and let us know. Mm -hmm. Also down there is the Glowforge Premium. A lot of people are asking, what is Glowforge Premium? Glowforge Premium is a new service that gives you free designs. It also gives you the fastest technology when cutting your machine, and it gives you enhanced features in your software. I also gave you a link to the proof grade material, which we'll be talking about here in just a second. And also, all of the cleaning supplies Sean's gonna be talking about, all of the additional things that we've bought for Glowforge, it is all down there. I do need to let you know, I have Amazon affiliate links down there. And if you use these Amazon affiliate links, we do get compensated by Amazon. Um, and for using that, we thank you because it does help support our channel. Uh, regardless who you support and buying your Glowforge, make sure to use someone's referral link because you get up to $500 off and it's huge. So, all right. Um, with that said, I'm gonna get one thing ah! that I kind of forgot to get while. So you just sounds good. Sick so I'm gonna tell you guys um, real quick what's going on with these guys. I'm gonna go down to a different camera here. So um, these are little guys we've made on our Glowforge, and a lot of you have reached out to me and said, "Can I missed out on it?" So even though we're gonna show you how to cut these on your Glowforge today, we did reopen this this uh cut out if you want to order it it will close on thursday we will have them to you well before christmas um they're 15 dollars a piece we did uh i did four different designs for you but basically it says the year everything was seriously elfed up 2020 it's very cute we have the traditional elf on a shelf which is this little guy we have then i love rudolph the red-nosed reindeer by uh rankin bass but I love the colors from it. So these are the boy elves. These are the girl elves. And then this is the head elf and also AKA buddy from elf. Yep. But if you want to get in on these, they're $15. They come with everything cut out, ready to go for you. They do not have masking tape. You will have to paint them. This is the last time we are offering this. So if you don't have a Glowforge and you want to get this, fill out that form. If you do have a Glowforge, make sure to watch this and we'll show you how easy this cuts. Super cute, super fun, and we all need this. 2020 has been rough, we need it, mm -hmm. okay? So that link is down below. We'll kind of remind people throughout the week because uh, this will be the last time we do this bundle, right, John? That's right. <laughs> all right, so let me show you real quick before we get into the software. Here you go, Sean. You can show people kind of what we've okay. cut on here. All right, here is some acrylic, basically like acrylic um, coasters that we did. We did this with his logo and then etched. I know it's very hard to see, there we go. Here, I can get it for you. So I'm not trying to talk over Sean. I know he has a lower, uh, he doesn't talk as. I could just turn this microphone on. <laughs> it's okay. So let me get, grab this really quick. Uh, let's push this all over. So when we first got the machine, the first thing Sean wanted to do was play around with it. And we found some different settings here. So these are just acrylic coasters that we cut out of their acrylic. Um, and you can see here, this one's a little different than this here because we, when we first got the machine, because we were new, we were like, why did they put tape on this? And we took it off. Uh, <laughs> And that tape is actually important if you don't want burn marks. So you can see on this guy here, there's burn marks I can't remove because we didn't have that protective film. Uh, but you can see, look at that, that's awesome. But the thing on this, it's really important to know is when it does acrylic on something like this, it does a whole bunch of fine lines. And you can see it through here. Let me go up close. Um, so it's got the power and the software to do that. So these are just some of the ones that he started with an engraving. Mm -hmm. He also did this one. This one is a very 
super light uh, uh, engraving. Yeah, and once again, we we didn't we were just playing with the machine, so we did leave the protective film on this when it did a light engraving. But then I wanted to cut a circle after the fact, and I'd already removed my protective tape, and that's where you see it kind of burned that edge. Mm -hmm. And we did this. This is one of the first things we we cut. Um, and you can see when you start taking, it will remove it. We just haven't. Um, one of the great features about the Glowforge is the, it has a camera bed. And the camera bed takes a photo. So you can literally have kiddos draw a picture, mm -hmm. sign your name, uh, so much stuff. Put it in the camera bed, take a picture, and then the Glowforge software will turn that into a graphic. And in this case, it actually scored or engraved. Which one did you do on uh, this? This one would have been engraved. Engraved. Um, and you might say, well, what's the difference between score and engrave? Let me see if I can find you a good one. Here we go. So engrave, score is very light. And it's a very, uh, this is more linear, so it's line yes. scoring, not the filling like, uh, like here. The machine is going back and forth and literally removing every little piece that is of this. This actually is, is almost considered like drawing, if you will, mm -hmm. but with a very, very fine point. So this is a score. And this is what we call um, draft score. Yeah. It's and we're going to show you very, that here in yeah, a sec. Show you a little more on um, that. And then a lot of people have asked, can you, you know, uh, use this with stencils or silk screens? And the answer is yes. We actually cut this out and then used um, some paste on this and it worked great. Mm -hmm. And I just want to show you some of this. A lot of people say, how detailed is it? It's amazing. Yep. So this is a probably a high def um, engrave. Yeah, look at that. Which and how took fun, a while. How fun um, is that? So, um, so we're going to go show you some stuff here. Uh, once again, all of the links are down below mm -hmm. and everything. We'll show you the software. We're going to cut out these guys. Let's show them these guys again. Mm -hmm. uh, here, we're going to show you how these are cut out. Now, we're going to cut them on both wood and acrylic. And the reason we're using this is we want to show you the difference between an engrave and a score and then show you the difference on the acrylic. Mm -hmm. um, so... What is... Have them on the back. Okay. So Switch. look at this. I'm going to switch you places, Shawnee, and let you do okay. you. So I'm going to keep one only because of what they are. So uh, what are we looking at? Well, I'm going to bring up... Because if they haven't been in the software, they might not know what you're talking about. Okay. So I'm going to... Sure. While you kind of zoom in and explain it, I'm just going to go in the software. Okay. So they can... Um, see what we're talking about. So this one here is considered standard draft. Standard draft engrave, which is basically the same as this. These are the same here. Okay. So this is this took approximately uh, seven minutes to do. So this is the machines going back and forth doing its engrave. Where this is a high definition engrave. It's deeper, a little more cleaner. It's a little hard to tell unless you really are watching it, you know, with your own eyes, but it is a deeper cut and it takes longer. Just this alone took 15 and a half minutes. So it does take a while to get when you do high depth. Yeah, okay. and let me go ahead and, and I want to quickly tell you guys here before I bring in the software, um, a lot of people are already asking, where do you get the files? What files can we do? So I'm going to show you, Glowforge does have a library of assets that you can use and purchase. Mm -hmm. If you are a premium, that also includes a lot of files. But pretty much the software takes SVG, PNG, JPEG, and you can get files pretty much anywhere. Etsy, you can get files in the Silhouette Studio software for those of you who have a Silhouette Cameo or Portrait. Um, the Silhouette Online Store has the option to download any images in SVG. Technically, uh, you can even take a screenshot of something and bring it into the software. Now, it may not be the best quality because it's converting it, but you can get files pretty much 
anywhere. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring up, is it okay if I bring up our, uh, the screen? Is that okay, Sean? Yeah, go ahead. All right. So I'm going to bring up our screen here. This is the Glowforge. And I basically, this is where it is. Once you have the machine, you have this. This is your dashboard. And for those asking, you can see we have a catalog. So I'm going to open up the catalog. And the catalog is their design catalog. So you have designs where you can uh, make things. Like, for example, this one here is build a snowman. And you can see... It is $9.99 for unlimited prints, or if you just want to do one print, it's $4.99. But since I'm a premium member, it's free. So I can uh, cut this right away, edit it, super easy. You also, um, like I said, they if you are a premium user, you get a ton of premium designs that they are adding. They also have a cut of the month, a week, all sorts of things that you can cut like right now this is a free one uh, it was for black friday it, it's a advent calendar that you can put in there really cool uh the other thing i wanted to show you is the shop tab so glowforge has what's called proof grade material we're going to show you that but this is where you can buy their proof grade material is right there and then of course i was saying there is the community which is literally a chat forum with anything and everything you would need to know. And beyond the manual is where we get a ton of assets. So now that I've shown you that, I'm gonna bring in this elf ornament just so you guys can kind of see the process. So literally we got this off of Etsy and I'm gonna go ahead and go in. I keep all of my files very in a nice area so I can find it. And I'm gonna bring it in right here and when you hit open, the Glowforge basically is going to convert that into a uh, format that works really good with the machine. So that is what it's doing right now. And there we go. Now, right now you're seeing the bed of our Glowforge because that's how we last used it. Now we have two Glowforges. We have a Pro and a Basic. We're going to be showing you the Basic today. And up here in the upper right-hand corner you can see where it lets us switch between our pro and our regular one. So when I hit the regular one, that's it. There we go. There's nothing in it either. So a um, couple things in here we'll show you, but basically this is the bed and it will take a picture of the bed. We're going to show you here in a sec what that looks like. But what Sean's talking about is the difference in HD versus SD. So what we're going to do... And draft. And draft. Thank you, Sean. So what we can do is let's go ahead and go back to here. And I'm going to go put something in that so we can okay. show them that option. While you're doing that, I'm going to briefly look, show you the other parts real quick. So these are scores. So these is just like what these were. Line scored. So it's just doing a line. The font that it was that was on the actual um, file is a uh, two lined, so it's wide. This is SD. This is draft. This only took one minute ten seconds to do. This is HD. There is no SD in, in score, but there is an HD in score. This takes three and a half minutes, and you can see that it's a lot more thicker, darker when they do it. Yeah, let me and bring up the, the, difference. the screen here again. So bring this up. So I put in medium drop board. We know that because it says that in the lower right hand corner. Um, and it does that by taking a picture. But what Sean's talking about right now is this engraving. So you have the option to do draft, SD, or HD. So that is kind of what he is talking about in the hd sd mm -hmm. right yeah okay so oops that's our sink so here we go all right johnny so are you still explaining or no no i'm good all right so we're going to show you guys this machine so the first thing we're going to do is show you how to clean it we've gotten a lot of questions on a quick cleaning and i want to make sure you guys know that there is a quick clean 
and then there is a deep clean. A quick clean is basically how we just clean the machine really quick to get it ready for a cut. A deep clean usually for us is when, for example, we do a lot of projects in a row. There is a deep cleaning, which that takes about how long would you say? Deep cleaning is um, the one that does not have the external fan takes about an hour. The one with the inter external fan is a little longer because it's a big fan to clean. Yeah. Um, but it's, yeah. it's nice to have. And we're going to talk about the external fan. What we're going to do is take our mobile camera mm -hmm. and a mic for Sean. I'm going to go with my computer so I can try to get questions as mm -hmm. well as we do this. Um, but we are on Wi-Fi, and if it starts getting jumbly or anything, let us know. Um, I will grab this, mm -hmm. and chat is a little delayed, but I will try yep. to grab it. Let's so make sure I'm turned on here. Are you on the right camera? Mm -hmm. All, right. All right. We ready? Yep. And then, whoops. Check, check, check. All right, you guys should hear me too as we walk. All right, and there's the big thing. I'll be right back. Give me a sec, Shani. Sorry. No, it says it's on. All right, guys. So I don't know what's going on, why you can't hear us. So what I'm going to have to probably do is tell you guys what he's doing um, to help with that. So, uh, Sean, are you going to put the camera up somewhere? Sorry, guys. You, live video. You just got to roll with the punches. All right, so I think I'm just going to tell you guys what he is doing, or do you want... Sean? What's that? What would you like me to do? Okay, first thing I'm going to wipe down the Okay, wait, 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 wait. So am I just going to talk to you, or... Because they can't hear you because you're so low in volume. Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and go back to that camera. Give me one sec. All right, Sean, we're good. So right now he's just cleaning the lid of the Glowforge. So, um, and then he's grabbing, these are, we use something called uh, Zeiss wipes. These are basically an alcohol pad that cleans your camera. And right there, that's the camera that is going to take a picture of 
the Glowforge bed. So when you cut stuff, especially wood, it's going to clog, or not clog, it's going to put a very layer of dust on that. And that's why he's going to go in there and clean. So he's going in there and cleaning that anywhere he sees any kind of dust settling. You can really see it on the Glowforge tube right there. The Glowforge tube has that thin layer kind of, of that dust, but basically that's what he is trying to clean with that. And it is pretty amazing. It doesn't look like there's a lot coming off, but it is crazy. So there's the tube I was talking about, and look at that. That's what we do. That's just, it's like a thin layer of just kind of uh, ash like because it cuts wood and everything like that. So, so that's what he's doing. He's using that to clean. And he also uses uh, baby wipes that are chemical free. And you'll use a mixture of uh, white vinegar and water, 50-50. And that is our other cleaning agent. Outside of that, we do not clean with any harsh chemicals um, or anything. The big thing when you are cleaning, a quick clean is going to be your camera, which is on the top of the lid. And then there is the actual laser uh, part, which is underneath where the Glowforge print head is. And he will take his weiss and clean under that as well, which is right there. Um, just be careful with that. You do not want to use harsh chemicals. So that is a quick clean. That is super quick. It is uh, something that we're going, you do basically, uh, we'll do a quick clean about every five cuts. The deep clean is what we do about every, I would say once a week. Uh, once after but every, we're using every, it a lot. After every big project yeah. that, I, that I do a deep clean. Okay. So what, if you have questions on cleaning here, yes, sorry about that. You do not have to clean it every time you use it. <laughs> no. Um, I'm going to let you take over this so we you can bet. do that. So, um, all right. So I'm going to, we're going to cut this in both wood and acrylic. So we're going to start with the wood first. Do you want to go ahead and um, go to the software and screen share? Yeah. So, um, essentially, just to let you know, I'm going to, um, you, the proof grade is what I want to show them. So we put Glowforge proof grade in the machine and it has this QR code. The QR code is the secret. And the reason it is a secret in my opinion is the fact that the proof grade literally has been programmed by Glowforge to work with that material. So just even on a regular cutting machine, a Cricut, Silhouette, whatever you've used, you guys all know back in the day, before all of the technology, people would have cheat sheets that would say pressure, speed, uh, vinyls this, uh, cardstocks this, specialty cardstocks this. So basically the Glowforge kinda was like that in the beginning until they came up with proof grade. Mm -hmm. And proof grade basically is material Glowforge has tested and sourced to where you put it in the machine, the camera takes a scan of the QR code, and it's ready to go. Yep. And why is this important? Well, let me show you this really quick on a camera below. If you do not have proof grade, you have to find your settings. And you can see here, Sean was doing some engraving settings because we didn't know what kind of wood this was. And you can see how deep he got it because he was just trying to mess around with it. Now, this is why if it's not proof grade, you always want to test because this is a very soft wood. We can see that it's right pine. here. It's pine. And that's what's the nice thing of proof grade. Now, you might say, well, if I can't get proof grade, what do I do? Most of the time, either be on the manual habit or two, a lot of times Sean will say, ooh, this is, this is maple. And oh, look at that. Glowforge has a maple setting already programmed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a quick test cut. Perfect. Um, so more than likely we use proof grade when we can, mm -hmm. but you can but, use other people's yeah, stuff. Yeah, you can. All right. So let's go back to the software here real quick. Costco baby wipes. Absolutely. Any baby wipe that's 
basically just water. I know what Heidi was saying, what about the yellow haze? That's why I use the uh, water and um, white vinegar mixture. That cleans all that off. All that. Yep. So um, let me make sure. Okay, we just want to make sure we're there. So real quickly to give you a rough tour of what's going on here. Here is your workspace. Basically, this is what your Glowforge has taken a picture. You can see here is light and here is light. And it's going to capture light from your room because it is a glass top. So if you don't get a good picture, sometimes we've even gone as far as covering it with like black felt to get a really good picture. Inside here though, real easy. This is all of your items off to the left and what you want to do. So for example, Sean has this set to engrave, but you can engrave, cut, score. You can even hit ignore. You have plus and minus. All this is going to do is let you zoom in and out on your project. You have a hand. This is just a pan. You can grab it and pan the, the actual bed anywhere you want. You have undo, redo. You have basic shapes. And you can see that says premium because that's a premium. You can insert text, premium. And then off to the side here. Sorry, I got to move all of our overlays and stuff here. Okay, so... If we go onto a design, you're going to see, let me get back to my select tool. All of a sudden I have these features as a premium too. So I have an outline, flip vertical, and flip horizontal. The last thing I wanna show you is right here. This is how you import artwork. So you can see as a premium member, we have tons of images available to us. You can also trace the bed or you can upload a file, which is what we did. Now, that I've shown you kind of a rough estimate, we can see our guys are in here and it is as simple as select and move around. The big thing on this is you are a little bit at liberty of how the file came in. And what I mean by that is if something is grouped, there is no way to ungroup something within the Glowforge software. You would have to ungroup it outside of the software. So, for example, if I wanted to do something inside this, I, I can't do it within the Glowforge software. I would have to do that in Adobe Illustrator or um, Inkspace, Inkspace something like yeah. that. Now you will see if I accidentally go off the bed, my image goes to a gray outline, which means you're outside of the bed and this image will not cut. So if we bring that back in, you'll see it red, Good rule of thumb, red is? Cut. Pink? Is engrave, or magenta is engrave, or score. So actually engraves teal, sorry love. Oh. Remember? That's right. So if you go and you go to engrave, it's gonna change it to a pink and teal, just like that. So if we go back to this and do score, it does it as pink, and if we go back to it as red it will be cut so we're just going to go back here so there is everything so we have this is a score the pink red is cut and then we can tell it what we want it to do so sean has this and you can see when i hover over engrave right there on his little mouth it turns teal so i'm going to zoom in so you can see that oops sorry so we're zoomed in and if i hit this right here it basically brings it as teal saying we're looking at that image right there. This is what Sean was talking about between HD, SD, and graphic, draft graphic. And the big part on that, and we will answer questions, guys. I see your questions. I'm just trying to get through this. The big part is what he showed you the difference. Do we want to show him again? Yes, or we can. you got it. Let me go back to that. So the big thing like this is SD um, score. So it's barely, the reason they do this is something if you want to test it real quick just to see what it looks like, that's the best way to do it. It's quick, it's fast. This took a minute and 10 seconds to do this whole thing. Um, it's very thin, it's not that deep. It just gives you the idea of what it looks like. If I want to do HD score, it's a lot thicker, a lot different. You don't get the spacing in between just because of the type of font, but this may be what you're looking for. When you go to an engrave, 
This is an SD engrave. This is a HD engrave. This took three, five minutes. This took 15 minutes. Just mm -hmm. this alone. So it's very slow, much deeper. You can see the thickness between the difference. This is SD. We did this a day. It basically, when you do an engrave, it uh, defaults to SD unless you change it inside yep. the program. So before we go to this cut, let me um, answer some questions that some people have, Sean. Okay. Um, so number one question is, I have a pro. Is an internal fan enough? Yes, it is. It's fine, and it is very noisy. So it works well. It's not the easiest thing to clean, but it can be clean. And there are steps to do it. And we do have. We're going to be having a video that on showing you how I yeah. use it, how to clean. It. And um, an internal fan is great. The external fan just gives you the ability to have a little bit more control if you're running into some issues. Yeah, it's a um, lot quieter too. They are sold out of proof great and have been for a while. Any suggestions? You can get some wood material at Home Depot. They carry, it's a little smaller in size, not by much. Uh, the height is the same, but the width is about an inch and a half. And difference. your big one's going to be Etsy. There is a ton of people yeah. that sell Etsy. Absolutely. Read the reviews. Yep. Very important. Um, but that's where we went and got them um, and stuff. So, uh... Let's see here. Right with Renee. What type of cloth? What type of cloth with vinegar water shine? Uh, use anything that is not that does not leave um, fibers. Like mm -hmm. microfiber is perfect. That's what I use on almost all my stuff. Believe me, when you do a large project and you're clean, your rags will look gross, um, smelly. I throw them in the wash. They don't come completely clean, but they're clean. Don't yeah. worry about it. It's just that basically like tar type material is what it's kind of like is yep but it is crazy so is premium worth it it's 50 percent off absolutely in my opinion yes number one you get a ton of free designs that you normally would have to pay for so that's a big one number two you get additional features you get the offset you get the ability to uh, a ton of images you can add text um so before premium if i wanted to add text to a project I had to go into a different software, add the text, and then bring it in. Mm -hmm. Now I can add it directly in from the Glowforge. Yep. So in my opinion, absolutely. The That's last nice. thing is it does speed up the process a little bit in in the cutting process mm -hmm. and stuff. So yes, um, let's see that. Uh, all right, and then I will answer the paint there in one sec. So what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and cut this so yeah. we have this as it um we're we're cutting everything in pink and well technically pink and uh, so uh are we doing engrave uh do you want to do engrave it okay. is on engrave yeah yeah it, sd it, sd take this whole item will take just about nine and a half minutes okay to do as is all right so let me go ahead and share the screen with yeah. them another nice thing about this is that you could do copy paste and make multiple of these so if i can get 10 on this entire working board so I can highlight it do copy C copy V and it copies it and you can just sit there and put it in there as long as it's not crisscrossing I can get 10 on that one board yeah and one other thing that I want to mention that I love is everyone keeps saying is there an app for Glowforge there is no app mm -hmm. all you have to do is go into your internet browser whether whether you're on an iPad or Chromebook so that could be Chrome or Safari just go to app.glowforge.com and it's it's that easy. Yeah. You it, on your touch screen, you literally just move stuff and slide it. Mm -hmm. Like Sean said, Command C, Command V, very easy you know, to use. If the something app. happens, like it all of a sudden enlarged or got too small, just hit to stop. Hit Control Z, goes back to exactly what you left it with. So there's that nice thing. Control yes. Z lets you go back to if you did something wrong. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and go back to the screen share. Here we are. So I'm going to go ahead and take the camera while you explain what's going on so they can hear you. All right. So we already have, um, I'm going to take the wood out just so they can see what that looks like. Okay. Let's see. Remote cam. So are you showing the desktop too or no? Uh, no, I can't do both. You can actually probably open up that. So that's the external fan back there. Sean, 
Just go ahead and do it on the iPad. Okay. And then I can show you. So he's got his iPad there. He's going to open that up here in a second. Um, the Cloud9, which is the same one that Heidi uses too, but hers is a six inch, so it does a little more volume CF, what they call CFM. Um, uh, the the amount of air that's being moved uh, the fan internally does a hundred and that's what mine is it's a four inch so he's got the it open it says it's ready so it's going to go ahead and what it did mean when it means ready that means it's already taken a look at the board at the bed looked at the QR code set everything up and now it's gonna sit there and there's a little red light that just popped on that is measuring the distance of the surface of that product to how far away the uh, cut head is and automatically does that. These are, um, I think this one is quarter inch, I believe. Are you doing, oh, oh I'm sorry, he's doing medium draft board. So now it says you're in the fast lane. That's because we are in premium. So what it's doing is that all this stuff has to go through the servers to do it. But since we're doing premium, it does it much faster than if you didn't have premium. Sorry about the camera, it's a little slow in this pro this special thing that I've got so I can so we can do this. Eight inch is probably a little overkill, but that's totally fine. Yeah, so it's telling us it's gonna take nine minutes, 25 seconds to do the whole thing. The light turns bright. Go ahead. And once it does that, you can hit the button. I'm waiting for you. Go ahead. And off it goes. Now, since we do not have the internal fan, it's very quiet. And right now it's gonna start with engraved. It actually will do what's in line with uh, that. There's the controller for our internal, uh, external fan. It's full speed. It's connected to that and out and then out the window and all the smoke goes right out that way. So it, it's gonna take nine and a half minutes to do everything from etching or engraving, cut, and score. All th this can do all three. So it just goes back and forth. This is in SD or um, it's between draft and uh, high def. So I guess you could call it standard def. Am I gonna get an external fan for my Pro? Um, I think eventually I will, just not yet. And I will definitely get the six inch, maybe the eight, but if you get the bigger, if you get the six or the eight, you definitely have to have something to, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, condense down to the smaller size because the exhaust of the machine is a four inch. So obviously you got to get something down there and they do sell those for those type of fans to reduce. It's a reducer is what it, that's what I was saying is a reducer. How did you decide when to use scoring and engraving? Uh, good, good question, Nancy. Something like this. It is a larger style of font, and I want that thicker look of the font. So engraving is what you're going to want to use. If when I showed you, like, I'll do this while he's doing that real quick. This is a score. So it's just a line. So you're not going to, and this is draft score. So it's very, not barely deep it's barely there the what I'm sorry okay hold on uh, there we go so here's the pro this has a pass-through so it can only do a quarter inch or it's, this opening is just slightly bigger than a quarter inch it can't do anything thicker than that but you can do a very long piece you put it through You'll do whatever it is, cutting, scoring, engraving, whatever it may be. It then makes a small little mark and allows you to push it through to the next spot. The, the computer determines where that's at and you can sit there and feed and feed as long as you have room in your room to do long things you can. And that's what that, this is why it's the pro because it's only the pro can do this. So I have it right next to the window, so it's a straight shot. Boom, boom, no no bends or turns, which I kind of like it that way. It's nice and easy, and I love it. Much easier. So Nancy, again, how do you want to look at it? How much time do you have? There you go.
Yeah, like how he says, it all depends on the design. Um, when we saw this, I said, this is gonna be an etch, so this will take time. To do all 10 of these on this piece of board would take an hour and a half by doing etching in SD. Yes? Why don't you go up to you for a second when Pelsberg's cutting? Okay, we're gonna go to me here. And you, if you guys have questions, I can kind of uh, answer some questions if you guys have any more. Uh, so let's I'll see. let you know when it starts okay. cutting. So just like I was saying, uh, Music Chick is at an eight inch fan. So it's a big fan, it's huge. Uh, Heidi has a six inch, I have a four inch. I wish I had a six, not to say the four inch is bad. The four inch works just fine. It's just that the more you have, the more air you can get out of there, the better and faster. So that's why a six is great and an eight is, I don't want to use the word overkill, but that's fine, it works. You just have to make sure you have the reducer from eight inch hole down to six, down to four, so it can connect to the machine because the machine only has a four inch hole. Any other questions? I'm looking right now. Perfect. Is your Pro lifted on two by fours for cooling? Actually, I only have it on two by four, so the hose, as you saw, it goes straight across. There's no up, and I do that, so when I clean my fan, especially in the winter time, I don't wanna take that outside because you're supposed to take it outside to clean your fan because you're gonna spray a chemical called um, Oh, Divac, or de there's a special stuff. It's a degreaser for electronics, and you spray it, and the fan is running while it's doing that, and you spray in it, and it goes out that. But because it is so cold here, I have to do it indoors, and I just wanted a straight shot right out the window, and that's why I have it that way. Um, and all those clean supply links are down below. Yeah, everything that we use to clean is down below from the degreaser, yeah, and you can get it. You can get it at Amazon, uh, the electronics board. If you think you're getting a little clean, you can spray all that stuff in there it cleans all the circuit boards it's very very nice um let's see i tried to get a six but it sold out ah that's a good reason why you got a an eight because it was sold out perfect um you do not have to put dubai forwards for cooling there is no reason for it um there's already a about this about a half inch of a foot sitting up and it's in the very if you're looking at the machine it's in the front right is where the intake so as the fan is sucking it's yeah so we're gonna show that real quick it's way under there so the intake is right there there's the intake for that so your cold air or your inside air or whatever goes up through that and then through the machine and out the other side because if you didn't have that there was there'd be no way to get a good flow of air so you definitely want to make sure that is never ever blocked that has to be left open that's why if it's on a flat surface on its own feet you're totally fine some people we got three and a half about a little over three minutes to go um let's see where are we at so it's almost done cutting is very fast it's even faster on, if you do SD, I'm sorry, draft scoring, it's very fast. Even on the basic, it's very fast. It's amazing. So it's gonna do this engrave, and then it's gonna do the the mouth, doing the swear words, basically, as you know, right quick. And as soon as it's done doing that, it'll start doing a cut. The score of the bottom base will be the last thing it does. How much is the premium for the Glowforge? I think, Sherry, it's $50 a month. So it's on sale half off, so it's $25 a month. Is there any negative about the machine? Um, well, price is usually the one on the big, for most, a lot of people, because you figure the, the Pro is uh, close to 6,000, the Plus is about 3,500, and the Basic is 2,500. That's probably the thing. Um, okay, now it's gonna start to do its first cut. So here it is cutting. You can see how much more smoke there is because the power is now increased to full power to start cutting. Yeah, I did. I, I just mentioned that. So there's a lot more. He's going to actually turn off the fan and watch how quickly this will start smoking up. It takes a second for it to die down. So now it's scoring in there. It's cutting the, the face. So the fan is not running and you can see how, sm that's how smoky that gets and how fast it gets. 
So now we're going to put the fan on full blast, which is, I think, nine pushes. It's now at full blast, and now it's going to start sucking all of that out of there. And believe me, if you don't have the fan in, the smoke will find a way to get out of that machine. Yeah, and right and see how much faster it moves? Just like that. Does that have the paper covering? Yes, this does have the paper covering on it because he's using the draft board. I did bring out a piece of uh, normal wood with grain and I took that off so I could get the actual burn score marking on the wood, which is what I wanted when I actually did these. Um, so this one already has the automatic, the, all the pro or all the proof grade already comes pre-taped. Yeah, so he's going to turn that fan off again. You'll see how fast it is. So the fan is off, and you'll see how quickly this will, as soon as the fan actually starts, it takes a moment for it to wind down. And see how quickly it'll fill up. And turn it back on now. Yeah, now see how much more smoke. Then we're going to turn it on full blast. And you'll start seeing it wind up, and it all starts sucking right out of there. And there it goes. And that's, that's crazy. Okay, so. Um, Renee, I do not purchase my draft board from Home Depot. I only get it from um, Glowforge. So it's almost done. Basically, it's trying to pull all the smoke okay, out. I'm, yes. I'm going to show them how it resets the bed so they can use other materials. Okay. So he's going to go ahead and pull that out. Sorry for the non focus. It's just the program in the machine. Does it smell? Yeah, it smells like burning wood because it's, it's wood. Draft board is basically MDF. Now this is, comes out in different pieces. Oh, got, got to stay together. That's nice. Okay. So you can use the same piece over and over again until there's nothing left. So some people have, some people will keep until there's literally nothing left, especially if you're making little tiny pieces. You could use between the two there if you had to, if you're making something small, but we go to the point if it's done, it's done. So it just says dismiss. It's gonna scan that. So it's scanning the bed and looking for a QR code, which it will. You can see the old one is still there and it's now ready to do anything you want. So if we want to make more, you could literally take your finger and move your stuff right on there. So you can touch the screen, like especially on an iPad, you just move it around to the place where there's no cut and do it all over again. And this is how you can use up your stuff over and over again until it's completely empty. Now, one of the tricks we do when you're cutting a lot of these is, and it might be out there, but we just take a washi tape, can be delicate tape or anything, can you come down oh, here? Sure. So instead of trying to pick up every little piece, we'll actually put this tape just right on and pick it up and it keeps all your pieces together. But you can see here, let me go ahead and get that tape off. We are done with the cut. Oh, took the mouth right off. Just like that. And I dropped that down there and I don't want her to eat it. Do you see it? Yeah, I found it. All right. Sorry. Um, do you have to use their material? Nope. Absolutely not, Debbie, you do not. Um, the nice thing about using the material, like I said, it sets everything for you. The speed, the power, everything. Boom, it's good to go. You don't have to do anything, you don't have to do anything, but just put it in and go. Um, once you find other material, like the stuff from Home Depot, a lot of their stuff is plywood, so there's real wood. It's got the real wood on top and the bottom. Only use non-contaminated or non-whatever leather, so, because I guess there's chemicals that can cause problems. Oh, I'm sorry, Gina. You just now, you just now got it. Wow. Just got what? Her Gina just got her tiki. Boy, that took a while. Oh wow, it did. That took a long time because usually it's two days and it's usually there. All right. I wanted to try to keep this an hour. Or so are we? Do we you have any other questions? At hour and ten. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to see if there's anything else. All right, you've already done that one. So yep. I think we're good. Reboot. Yeah. So we talked about that. Talked about that. 
And we talked about that. So Music Archic says, have you cut leather with it? We've cut leather. You cannot cut pleather. Very careful with that. It can be uh, damaged or dangerous to your health. But we've cut leather. Um, pretty much everything Glowforge, when you buy a Glowforge, they give you what's called the accessory kit, which comes with the crumb tray, comes with all of your packaging, but it also comes with a box of goodies. And they give you some... Um, acrylic they give you uh wood they give you hardwood mm -hmm. softwood yep. leather uh acrylics, color acrylic color acrylics some veneer. Piece, some of those pieces you may get are like this big just for you can to sample Could it with it, it cut metal no why can't it none of the none of the main lasers can cut metal it can engrave metal it can this one can engrave um certain metals like um ox, uh, anodized aluminum which is what your phone Back of the phone cases made of your uh, iPads and um, MacBook Pros, all that stuff, you can etch on that, not a problem. Uh, there's a couple other things that'll it, you can go in there and it'll tell you one. We have not done one yet. I want to do one. I've got an old iPad, or we have an old uh, MacBook Pro, an old one that I want to etch on it just to see what it does. I even have an iPad, old iPad, um, to see how it does. You to cut metal, you have to have what's called a fiber laser fiber laser to cut metal those are pricey very pricey um the bigger the tube the laser tube is the bigger the more power you can get the pro is 45 watts that's as much and they you cannot get anything else out of it except 45 watts these bigger machines the power goes up as the power goes up the thicker the stuff you can cut uh the faster it can cut or engrave um, there are machines out there that they have a bed that's four feet by three feet. That's huge. It's gigantic, 100, 130 watts. It's fast. It can cut big stuff. So that's what's not, as you get. If you need that, you have to go to big, big machines. I do want to try and do um, granite. I do have a piece of granite uh, to engrave. So there you go. Is the basic good enough to start to see what it's worth? Billy, absolutely. A lot of people I, want to do that's why we did. We just we, we weren't sure really. Yeah. We I do it. want to say that the basic, if I remember right, let me check really quick on my link. Um I do believe the basic is a little bit further out right now for shipping. Let me yeah. check on that somebody, though. Somebody said they got one. I'm not sure which one they got, but they got it nine days early. So that's kind of nice. Oh, that is nice. Uh, Heidi, you can do any leather as long as it has not been treated with any chemicals. If it's a freshly cut, uh, freshly, I hate to use the word killed deer, and you have the leather, it's fine. As long as it's fret and there's nothing chemically treated with it. So fine. the Glowforge Basic is two more, two months back order right wow, now. two months. Yeah. And even the um, Pro, they're saying December 26th, which is regular shipping. They do have um, uh, pretty fast shipping. I mean, we got our Pro within a couple of days. Yeah. And you can do... You can do uh, the other one. The other thing I wanted to show you guys, because a lot of people ask me about this um, when they're doing it. Let me share my screen here. Um, so a lot of people will say, Ken, I went to your link, gave me the 500 discount. It's $54.95, but when I come down below, it says $6,500. And the reason why is they automatically check the Glowforge air filter. So if you do not want that, and unclick it, then it will adjust your price down here. But it's automatically going to connect that because it's going, it is a air filter that makes it mobile pretty much anywhere. Yes. And earlier I was saying, let me grab my links here. These are the links you guys should see. Here is the air filter, technically Black Friday, um, which is basically um, you're getting it at a little bit of a discount here, normally about 1300. This is the filter right here that would go inside that. So there is a deal on that. And there normally and is. And that filter has its own fan. So mm -hmm. if you buy a fan, and it's just the fan like we have, you have to tell the machine, I have an external fan, which turns off that internal fan. And yeah. that's doing the same thing. You're basically saying, hey, I've got the filter, but you really don't. It just turns it off. I do want to say, and a lot of people don't understand this, if you do get the filter, the big filter, you... They highly, highly recommend 
do not use draft board cutting. Correct. So a couple, of the a couple things we've learned from getting it. Number one, and you would think that it would be obvious to Sean and I, especially for what we've done, you have to clean the machine. It doesn't clean itself. So when Sean did the first clean, he's like, Ken, I've cleaned it, Kenny, I've cleaned it. And then sure enough, we went, once again, one reason I love the Glowforge is you get that community beyond the manual. We looked it up and everyone said, here's how to deep clean your machine. Mm -hmm. And that's when Sean literally took out the fan and it was... Thank goodness our warranty was already over with. So I went ahead and the, the basic is the only one where you can actually go in there, undo the four screws and take the fan physically out. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I haven't seen the plus possibility, but you cannot do that with a pro nope. at all. There are what's called heat sinks in front of the fan, which keeps it cold, which you can, which allows you to work all day long yep. without it getting overheating. But my, my point on that is we would not know as much as we do with this machine without the Glowforge community. It has been amazing. There's Facebook groups. There's the beyond the manual. Mm -hmm. And Glowforge service has always got back to us within 24 to 48 hours, which I know when you're cutting seems like forever because you're like, I need to print. Um, but half the time when we've done that, we've went beyond the manual and had it fixed yeah. within yeah. seconds. It's amazing because some people, other people out there have ran into the same problem and they say, this is what I did and this is how it works and boom, it's fixed, yeah. it's done. Um, one of the things I did do with my basic, because once again, it is no longer under warranty and stuff. I did take the fan out. It was pretty corroded. It was pretty bad. But I also cut, there's a metal, there's an aluminum thing, that honeycomb looking thing that the air flows. I cut that all out to allow more and mm -hmm. better airflow. Plus, if that's, when I kept it in there, it still got clogged with dust and debris and smoke and, and all the stuff that stuff makes. And I had to clean that too. But now that it's no longer in there, I don't have to worry about yeah. that anymore. All right. So this Google form, <clears throat> coming back down here, mm -hmm. uh, if you don't have a Glowforge, you want to get these ornaments. Um, they're super cute. Uh, paint them however you want. Uh, this will close Thursday at 11.59 Pacific time. If you have questions on the Glowforge, the Glowforge Basic Pro Plus, what it can do, what it can't do, um, please reach out to us. Uh, sometimes if you reach out to me directly, I may start a group conversation mm -hmm. between me and Sean, just because Sean knows a lot of the technical aspects of it. Um, but the big thing on this machine I really want you guys to understand is if you're using a wood, acrylic that's not glowforge proof grade always do a test cut always mm. always do a test cut it's not worth ruining your machine mm. to get brave with it yeah. so do a test cut Way down the corner you know mm -hmm. little circle that's all you have to yeah. do yeah um and also go in and play with the software at mm -hmm. glowforge.com you can see how easy it is to use and it's awesome does it cut ceramic like a ceramic tile no but you can etch it you can if you have a piece of tile that's like let's say just a piece of white acrylic. I've never done it, but you should be able to uh, etch on it. Yep. And then cut. these uh, guys here are $15 per ornament. Um, and you get all the pieces with it. Of course, they won't be, they're taped together. So it will actually get shipped like this with a little piece of tape here that allows that um, and stuff. So it's our answer. A lot of people were doing the, uh, the F flakes. I will just say the F flakes. Um, everyone loves those. I love them. <clears throat> it's a snowflake that says 2020 in the middle and then a four letter word that starts with an F. So this is our our take on basically 2020 has been a rough year yep. and stuff. So it's and, cute. Uh, we can we do two day shipping. So Thursday, even by Thursday close, uh, cutting these, we'll have them out by over the weekend yeah. Monday. So you'll get and, them before Christmas. Yeah. And one of the things I'm, I'm going to think about this, like I said, a full sheet of this took me an hour and a half. If I change my thing to something a little simpler, <laughs> simple as this, I can cut my time so much faster. So much faster. Even if I went to the draft etching, I can save a lot of time because it still looks good. I may not get the burn effect because it's not using as much power, but it will still look good. Little things you can look about, think about when you do it. Can it etch candles? I don't see why it couldn't. I would definitely take a piece of candle, test it, Wouldn't it and see what happens. Melt the candle? 
It de- you can you can control the power. You can control, you can control the power. You. There's a thing. If it can cut on macarons or macaroons, you can do food. Yeah, you it'll do food. food. But remember, if you Not start food with food, only do food. Don't do anything else. Not food safe because remember, you're cutting wood and stuff. And you don't want that. All so. that stuff. If Thank you just you. want to do it just to see what it does, that's fine. Just don't eat it. Yeah. It'll do pancakes, food, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So um, we're gonna let you guys go. We'll do uh, some more acrylic later this week. Um, we have a whole series of Glowforge videos coming. It's just crazy time right now. But if you have questions, please reach out to us. I know it's a huge investment. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, I was one of those people that said, I can't warrant the price, Sean. It's too expensive and I'm just not familiar with it. It has been the single most important thing we have bought for our business. Yep. Not only to help show you guys, but I've had so many people that have followed us for years that got the maker, was frustrated because it couldn't do what it did. Um, you know, I'll use Sharon. As an example, Sharon, who has followed us for years, she opened her own shop. Yep. Making stuff from her laser cutter. Her own shop. And she just posted a photo to her Facebook page of the back of her car full of USPS boxes saying, I can't keep up. This is amazing. I yep. never dreamt this would happen. Yeah. So, And she had, she bought a, a different type of laser that it's much bigger. Um, so Sherry similar, says, yeah. um, I'm longing for a Glowforge. I want to cut wood kits, wood kits and sell them. It's exactly what we've been doing because we know not everyone can get a Glowforge. But it's awesome that you can cut kits do classes around it mm-hmm. and sell them. It's yep. a great way. That's what's great about this machine. There's so many different ways that you can make money with this machine. Yeah. It just depends on how you want to approach it. How do you want to do um, it? Yeah. So, uh, and I will say, consu- we've looked at other laser cutters. On a consumer level, this is the one I would go with. There consumer, is some yeah. nice laser cutters out there that are heavy duty commercial mm-hmm. but consumers we've seen the smaller ones we play with the smaller ones they don't compare no. not even close yeah. so this this, this is uh, it's good it, yeah and the it's ease of it. use it, you'll, you'd be surprised how easy it is yes yeah. all right so if you have questions reach out to us we will be live tomorrow on our chalk tour page so if you want to mm-hmm. see us over there check us out tomorrow we usually go live about 6 6 30 um other than that Anne says, can you put family name on the elf? If you want to send us an email, we can. Yeah. But I have to but ask if, Sean how that works. Yeah, but if you are if you have it and if it allows you to actually take it off and grab it and put something else in it, yeah, yeah you can. It just but depends asking, on your programming. If you're asking about the actual ordering R's that were our kits open, there's a note section. Put that in the notes. Yeah. And, and we'll, we'll, we'll let you know. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining. I hope you guys have a great evening. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody.